Huntsville's historic William Street, originally the town's southeastern boundary, lies in an area where more than 190 years ago, early settlers found a magnificent grove of tall oak and stately poplar trees. Home sites on the rolling hills that stretched from Williams toward the foothills of Montesano were early recognized as choice residential spots. Many of the people who built their, home, their town homes and mansions here were leaders, not only in the development of Huntsville, but of the state and nation as well. Many of the homes erected in this lovely setting remain today and are cherished by the present generation as they were by past generations. William Street, named for Robert Williams, governor of the Mississippi Territory when Madison County was established on December 13, 1808. On today's show, I am delving into Alabama's early history as I reacquaint you with one of our forefathers, the second governor of Alabama, Thomas Bibb, and his incredible life. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbark. Early Alabama history records indicate that in 1808, Thomas Bibb and Leroy Pope came to the wilderness area of the Mississippi Territory that is now Huntsville, Alabama. Two years later, Leroy Pope's son-in-law, John Williams Walker, and daughter Matilda joined Pope and Bibb. The three men are credited with the early development of Madison County. These men were wealthy landowners from Petersburg, Georgia, known as part of the Petersburg Group. All had originally came from the Amelia and Prince Edward counties of Virginia. They were politically connected and many had family ties to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Bibb was born in 1782 in Prince Edward County, Virginia. He was the second son of William and Sally Wyatt Bibb, who were fourth and sixth generation Virginians. Thomas's mother Sally was first cousins to Martha Washington. There's an interesting story that states that at the birth of her first son, Martha Washington came to visit. While holding the child, she asked Sally had she yet named him. Sally replied no. Martha Washington asked Sally would she name him John Dandridge after her brother who only lived to be 19. Sally did and John Dandridge Bibb was the first son of William and Sa Sally Wyatt Bibb. Thomas married Pamelia Thompson in 1805 in Petersburg, Georgia. Pamelia's family also had connections to Virginia's Amelia County, and the couple had 11 children, three of which died in infancy. In 1808, Thomas left Georgia for the Mississippi Territory in, in what is now present-day North Alabama and settled in Madison County before establishing himself in Limestone County. He dabbled in politics upon his early arrival in Alabama and in 1819 was a delegate to the Constitutional Convention representing Limestone County. He was elected to the state Senate and subsequently as President of the Senate. For the most part, however, Thomas concentrated on his own economic affairs as planner and merchant. By the time his brother William Wyatt arrived in Alabama, Thomas had become successful in business and financial interest in the newly established Huntsville and had established valuable political and economic connections with the town's elite. According to the Alabama Homestead and Cash Entry Patents record, Thomas Bibb purchased over 700 acres of property in the Huntsville area, 40 acres in Tuscaloosa and 2,500 acres in Limestone County prior to 1831. Records indicate that each purchase was in cash. Thomas's brother, William Wyatt, joined him in, Al in the Alabama Territory in 1816. William Wyatt was a noted politician from Georgia, having served as state legislature, a U.S. House representative from 1807 to 1813, and a U.S. state senator from 1813 to 1816. He was appointed governor of the Alabama Territory by President James Monroe. When Alabama was admitted to the Union in 1819, William Wyatt Bibb became the first governor of the state of Alabama. 
A few months after his election, the governor was killed in a riding accident. He was thrown from his spooked horse during a lightning storm. Thomas Bibb, as president of the state senate, succeeded his brother as governor in 1820. He held that office until December 1821. And in 1828 and 1829, he was elected a representative to the state legislature. Thomas Bibb died in Mobile, Alabama on September 20, 1839, at age 56. His body was preserved in either whiskey or wine, the written accounts that are available for both, and brought home to Limestone County, where he was buried in the family cemetery on the plantation. Twenty years later, his remains were retrieved and brought to Huntsville, where he was buried in the Bibb family plot at Maple Hill Cemetery. His wife, Pramilia Thompson Bibb, died in Huntsville on September 5, 1854, and is buried beside her husband. When we return, we will be visiting the Bibb Mansion, one of the finest examples of Greek Revival architecture in the country. The answer to all your car buying questions. Now in the hands of every salesperson at your North Alabama Honda dealer. Saving you lots of time. Folks love the Accord. How many to choose from? 48 today. Pick your favorite color and trim level. Best price? $1.99 a month. Compare it to a Camry. Take a look. Gas mileage? Up to 36 miles per gallon. That's one giant leap in car sales technology. And it's only at your North Alabama Honda dealer, Huntsville, Decatur, and Florence. Before I begin talking about the incredible Bibb Mansion, I want to give you a brief history of the property leading up to the beginning of its construction in 1824. In 1809, Colonel Leroy Pope originally owned the lot upon which the home is built, having bought all the land now covered by Huntsville at a government land sale. J.M. Taylor bought the two acres from Colonel Pope in 1818 and John Reed bought the property, including a house, in 1819. Governor Thomas Bibb bought the property and the house in 1821 and lived in the federal house believed to have been built between 1812 and 1818. Prior to construction of the current home, the upper floor of the two-story federal home was removed and the Greek Revival of home was built over the bottom floor. These two original homes formed the basement of the home. Today, there remains evidence of such. The fireplaces were not built for cooking, and the woodwork is much too intricate and well-finished for a cellar. The door into the furnace room from the stair room is a double cross door, very fine, such as formed by entrances of good houses. Windows and doors have well-worked frames, all using the expensive method of being joined by pegged mortise and tenon connections, meaning one piece of wood was trimmed to slip into another, then held together by a peg that is called a tree nail. In addition, there remains wood wainscoting in the interior of these rooms that would have not been used in a cellar. Contained in the current cellar, outside the door, believed to be the original front door, is a former cistern shown in the photo as a brick circle, as well as a brick outline of a walkway, probably an outdoor one. This also addresses the writings that indicate that Thomas Bibb lived in the home while the new home was under construction, most likely in these two rooms. When we return, we'll be visiting the interiors of the beautiful Bibb Mansion. Stay with us. Established in 1978, Randy Roper Interiors is the premier interior design firm for residential and commercial projects. The goal at Randy Roper Interiors is to work with each client to create a beautiful, warm, and comfortable space that reflects your individual tastes. Randy Roper Interiors offers one of the largest resource design libraries in Alabama and is located at 311 North Jefferson Street in downtown Huntsville. Randy Roper Interiors, where experience matters. The Bibb home in Huntsville's historic Twickenham has been described as a worthy example of the finest work of classic Greek Revival period in Alabama. Its detail shows a thorough understanding of the Ionic order as well as an appreciation for good architectural design. The house presents a powerful work in the Greek Revival style with the grand order, two-story, Ionic 
columns supporting a temple front pediment of large dimensions. The portions and balance of designs are excellent, and while the house is of opposing dimension, it is quietly dignified. Construction began in 1824 and was completed in 1836. The house was built and planned by Thomas Bibb, the second governor of Alabama. The house was patterned after Governor Bibb's plantation house in Belmina. Glancing through the story of his life, one has a feeling that he desired to build this mansion as something as an artistic hobby, to perfect in it any points which might have to him seen flaws in the building of Belmina. For instance, he added a grandiose pediment to the portico, whereas Belmina had a simple hipped roof. And here he chose spectacular stone columns with elaborate ionic capitals to support the pediment, making for one of the loveliest and most architecturally perfect Greek Revival porticos to be found anywhere. It appears from all points of view to be the sturdiest grand manor mansion in Alabama. Contrary to some publications, Bibb actually designed and built the house for himself, not his daughter, Adeline and husband James Bradley, although he did sell it to them at a reduced cost in 1936. Records show that Thomas Bibb was awarded part of the construction work on the Madison County Courthouse shortly after this house was finished. Thus, we know he was a builder. Meticulous journals were kept on the mansion which show that $32,000 was spent on its construction. A tidy sum when it is considered that slaves did the brick work on the scene. As beautiful as the pillars and pediments are, it is the bricks themselves which are possessed with the most exciting character. They have a purplish sienna tone. They were soaked under water to give lasting wear and durability. And until this day, they do not show the faintest sign of deterioration. Herein again, an example where the ingenuity of a pioneer builder fitted his materials to the needs and emerged with an accomplishment of architectural refinement. Inside, the mansion is first furnished with smart, exceedingly good workmanship. The exterior walls are 20 inches thick and three foot partitions separate the two front rooms and hallway. On both floors, the room dimensions are 20 by 22 feet with 16 foot ceilings. Wide folding doors separate the 17 by 22 foot hallway from the library and the parlor, and a winding staircase leads to the second floor bedroom. Among the noteworthy interior embellishments are the incredible iron window cornices that are original to the house. The intricate marble mantles, which replaced the original Adams style mantles in the 1880s, the beautiful chandeliers, and the large matching French bevel mirrors that are 70 inches square. At the far end of the hall is a staircase with its double landing. The brick partitions between the room are three feet in thickness. The addition of the kitchen was the only significant change to the interior of the house. During the preceding century, Kitchens were located apart from the house and servants were utilized for the transportation of meals. The hand-hewn cedar fence enclosing the front lawn fronting the Governor Bibb house is of the type and proportions to be expected in 1836 and is thought to be original with needed repairs added through the years. The grounds have old boxwood, magnolia, and holly trees that enhance the majesty of the four-column portico. Until the 1940s, the original carriage house stood in the rear of the house. Thomas Bill died September 30, 1839, and the house was not to remain long in the Bibb family. Son-in-law, James Bradley, who suffered financial setbacks in the cotton business in New Orleans, had to sell the house in 1844 to meet his obligations. The mansion was bought by Andrew Byrne of Virginia in 1844, whose son, George P. Byrne, and his descendants occupied the home for 76 years. From the Burns, it went to the nephew, Howard Thomas, who sold it in 1920 to W.E. Butler. Then, in 1927, it was purchased by Ellen White Newman and Susie Newman Hutchins, 
and again fell into the Bibb hands. Mrs. Newman was a great-great-granddaughter of Thomas Bibb. The house remains in the Hutchins family today under the watchful eye of Dr. Eleanor Hutchins. The house was used as a Union headquarters during the Civil War, and General William Tecumseh Sherman utilized the house on occasions, and soldiers camped in the massive rear gardens. As we've enjoyed the beautiful interiors of the home, I do wish to point out that this 1830 Empire sofa is the only original piece of furniture of the Bibb family. When we return, we're going to be learning more about early Alabama history. Stay with us. To say you've worked too hard to let this economy jeopardize your future would be an understatement. While you don't have control over today's markets, you do have control over how well prepared you are for the future. That's where the Keen Group at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville can help. Wealth Management Advisors Penny and Tom Keen will create a plan that can help you weather the uncertain markets while keeping you on track. Call or visit our website, The King Group, at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville. Member FINRA SIPC. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. I'm standing in the library of the Thomas Bibb Mansion, and I want to tell you about John Williams Walker. His portrait is above me, which you'll see in just a moment. He was an American politician who was a uh, United States Senator from the state of Alabama, the first Senator elected by that state. Walker was born August 12, 1783 in Amelia County, Virginia of Scottish Irish heritage. In 1808, he married Matilda Pope, the daughter of Leroy Pope and Judas Sale. And in 1810, he followed his father-in-law to settle in the new town of Huntsville in the Mississippi Territory, now Alabama. And there began the practice of law. The story of Alabama's first senator is most fascinating. When Madison County, Alabama was still wilderness, Walker trekked across the mountains from Georgia with his bride, Matilda Pope, his slaves, and all his household possessions to build a plantation near Huntsville. Here he began his extraordinary political career. Though his term in the Senate was cut short by illness, resignation, and death, in the four years he served, he met head-on the most controversial issues of the day the Missouri Compromise, the acquisition of Florida, and land relief legislation. It is in land relief that he made his most significant contribution, for he fathered the 1821 land law upon which new public lands legislation for a decade after was based. His own state wildly acclaimed him upon its passage. Other, fronts, other frontier states had good reason to make him the public hero he became. Upon the formation of the Alabama Territory in 1817, Walker served as a representative from Madison County to the first territorial legislature in 1818. In the second session, he served as speaker. In 1819, he was president of the convention that framed Alabama's first constitution, which enabled Alabama's admission to the United States. On October 28, 1819, Walker was elected by an almost unanimous vote of the state legislature as the first United States Senator from Alabama. He served from December 14, 1819 until his resignation on December 12, 1822 on account of his failing health. He died of tuberculosis at age 40 in Huntsville on April 23rd 1823 and is buried in Maple Hill Cemetery. Walker County, Alabama, established December 20th, 1824, is named in his honor. John Williams Walker was the father of Leroy Pope Walker, Confederate Secretary of War and Brigadier General. As Confederate Secretary of War and living one block down the street from the Bibb House, Leroy Pope Walker signed the orders to fire on Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina that started the Civil War on April 12, 1861. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques began serving customers June 2006 and is regarded as Huntsville's finest antique gallery. The shop represents high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries, the largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. 
From day one, the business has focused on three principles that have established the essence of Rivenbark and Roper Antiques. They take great pride in providing their clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest prices possible, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their homes. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques has gained the reputation of offering a high quality product with extensive personal service. The shop has lived by the strict policy of not selling reproduction furniture and abiding by the original guidelines of not selling furniture newer than 1940. Their strengths are reflected in their dedicated customers. Customers know that when they engage in business with Rivenbark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. Another interesting family member that I'd like to reacquaint you with is Robert Thompson. Robert Thompson was a father-in-law of Governor Thomas Bibb and father to Pamelia Thompson Bibb. The pioneer, Old Blue, got that nickname for the practice of always carrying his funds around with him in blue denim bags. He was a merchant of considerable means, having been born in Amelia County, Virginia, about 1754. He was the son and grandson of older Robert Thompsons of Virginia. His grandfather was an affluent goldsmith as well as a planner. While in Virginia, Old Blue fought in the American Revolutionary War and married his cousin, Sarah Watkins. The Thompson family moved from Virginia to Petersburg, Georgia after the war. In Georgia, Robert entered into merchandising with his sister's husband, Samuel Watkins. Robert and Sarah Watkins Thompson had three children, all daughters, who married into the upper echelons of society in Huntsville and continued to establish more early state history. Sophie Thompson married Dr. James Manning, who came to Petersburg with his brother Daniel from New Jersey before moving to Madison County. Pamelia Thompson married Virginian Thomas Bibb and later Governor Thomas Bibb and Eliza Thompson married Dr. Waddy Tate in 1808 in Petersburg, Virginia. Frame the special moments of your life with handcrafted furniture from Stickley. Lovingly made by hand. Providing comfort, beauty, and plenty of glamorous elbow room. Stickley made for life. For the only place you'll find Stickley in North Alabama, Townhouse Galleries, Huntsville and Decatur. The following advertisement is proudly sponsored by Moss Lumber Company of Gurley, Alabama. A new leash on life helps thousands of homeless animals each year find a forever home. Our main purpose is to end the euthanasia of wonderful, adoptable pets in our community. Your support is greatly needed to carry out our mission. Opportunities are available to volunteer in the facility, foster a loving animal, donate to meet the financial needs of these animals, and shop in our Marketplace thrift store. Visit us today. A new leash on life needs you. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the youngest daughter of Thomas Bibb, Eliza Permelia Bibb Hopkins. Her portrait is actually just across the street from us in the Whedon House Museum, Alabama's oldest house museum. Eliza Permelia was the youngest daughter of Governor Thomas Bibb. She is remembered as being gifted with the great vitality and individuality of her remarkable ancestry and preserving her bright intellect to the last she survived all her contemporaries. Her family was justly proud and encouraging of her as she took great interest in compiling family records. Pamelia married Arthur Mosley Hopkins in 1837. Little is known about Arthur Mosley Hopkins except he was the son of Judge Dr. Arthur Francis Hopkins of Alabama. He died in 1866 in Manchester, England. 
Ancestry.com gives us a little bit of information about Eliza Permelia Bibb. Other than her birth date of 1821 in Alabama, in 1860 at age 39, we know she resided in New Orleans. And in 1870 at age 49, she lived in Madison, Alabama, and she was regarded as a seamstress. She died 1899, on January 18th, at age 78, and is buried near Nashville, Tennessee. The painting of Eliza Permelia Bibb Hopkins was donated to the Whedon House Museum by Sally and Michael Wright of Portland, Oregon. Sally is the great-great-granddaughter of Eliza Hopkins, who is the eighth and youngest surviving child of Governor Thomas Bibb. The Wrights donated the portrait in memory of Sally's mother, Marcia Joyce Sager, great-granddaughter of Eliza Hopkins, who on her deathbed asked her daughter Sally to please bring Eliza home. To Michael and Sally Wright, I wish to say thank you for your generosity. Thank you for sharing Eliza Familia Thompson Bibb with the city of Huntsville. She's now proudly portrayed in the Whedon House Museum for all to enjoy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tommy Battle, Mayor of the City of Huntsville. I want to welcome you to the Whedon House. The Whedon House was built in 1819, same time Alabama became a state. And the Whedon House is one of the oldest home museums in the state of Alabama. Come visit the Whedon House. It's one of our five museums in Huntsville. Come and stay and enjoy your stay here. Come visit the Little Green Store on Montesano Mountain. The Little Green Store carries art, ceramics, jewelry, and gift items representing the work of over 100 artists and artisans. Every piece is American made, and most of the art showcases the creative pulse and energy of Huntsville and North Alabama. Engage with your community and give local artists a voice when you purchase local, high-quality, and environmentally friendly art and design. The friendly staff at the Little Green Store is eager to assist you in finding special and unique gifts for every occasion. The Little Green Store on Montesano Mountain. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I've had the honor of sharing with you the memory of Governor Thomas Bibb and sharing the beautiful mansion here in Twickingham in the historic district of Huntsville, Alabama. I wish to thank Dr. Eleanor Hutchins, the owner of the home, for allowing us to come into this beautiful home. Thank you for providing me with such information on Thomas Bibb, and it's just been wonderful. I would like to add on behalf of all of Huntsville, thank you for your many contributions through the years that have made our city so wonderful. Oh, Ken, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. With a heart full of gratitude, I'm Ken Rivenbart along with Dr. Eleanor Hutchins.